All right, everyone, and welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. I am Christina, aka That Variety, and today we are back with this week's NXT reaction video. We've got a pretty stacked episode in our hands. We have LA Knight and Cameron Grimes taking on Grizzle Young Vets. We've got Roderick Strong versus Bobby Fish, and we've also got some more developments in the whatever index situation we've got going on with the love her or leave her match involving Johnny Gargano versus Dexter Loomis and that sort of thing. Uh, before we dive into the reaction, I just want to thank everybody for checking in on me. We had this weird fire alarm situation in my apartment building at like five something yesterday morning. Well, by the time this post, it'll be Monday morning when it happened. It was like a weird like fire alarm situation because we're connected to other surrounding buildings. And so someone else's building had like a weird fire alarm thing that wasn't working. And so that impacted us. <laughs> so you can imagine me like running on all of two hours of sleep, going down 13 flights of stairs <laughs> all the way from the 11th floor because of this whole mess, but we're doing okay. Nobody's hurt and that's all that matters. Right, right. But thank you all so much for just checking in on me on social media. We're still trying to regroup on some sleep. I thankfully got a solid eight hours, not all at once, but a solid eight hours yesterday. So on that crazy note, uh, without further ado, let's just dive right into the reaction. Oh, okay, I guess everybody's fighting each other right away inside the squared circle. Yeah, full disclaimer, we missed like the first five minutes because we've been deep cleaning around here, so there's that. My bad. <laughs> All right, it looks like Hit Row is in control right here. All right. You know, why doesn't Legato Del Fantasma add like a temporary fourth member or something? Like, they don't have to be fully fledged members of Legato Del Fantasma, but they can if they want to. But I think a temporary alliance might be best for them and that sort of thing. Oh, that was sneaky. That was very sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, did y'all just see Escobar's kind of like walk off from the apron? All right, we're back and we've got the stupid sci-fi logo. <laughs> I have nothing in sci-fi or anything like that. Like there's a niche for everything, but Jesus, take the wheel. We need some help with the logo here. We had a whole TED talk on it last week. I was gonna say, who's going after MSK then? Have we got a number one contender or anything like, what, what's happening with MSK? It does beg the question, like, are we gonna get Swerve versus Escobar? Because that would be great. You know, with the title and everything on the line, I could see that happening. I, I would not want to be in there with Top Dollar, not at all. Oh, okay, well this match is over with because Escobar just hit Top Dollar with a chair. So that just happened. Oh God, what just happened? Oh, he has the grill, okay. Okay, well at least they're establishing who we're supposed to cheer for in this whole situation. I'm assuming we're supposed to be cheering for Hit Row and booing Legato Del Fantasma. I'm kind of impartial just because I like both teams. Oh, oh, there's B-Fob. Oh my God. Look at that. Look at the team unity. Okay, well overall the match was okay for what it was, even though the ending was kind of weird. All right, so we're in this really dark room where Dexter Loomis is kind of recapping everything with this whole, oh my God, how long did this thing go back to? Dude, I mean, I'm cool with all the drawings, but I think a bit of a more proper recap would be nice, but definitely an interesting way to do so. I'm. We'll have to see what happens with this Dexter Loomis and Index situation on our hands. Okay, good, Ridge Holland's back with the cool music, nice. Seriously, like that's literally how I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep an eye on this person. They've got cool music. Yes, the dude with the cool jacket's back. All right. I'm interested to see how Ridge Holland's gonna do and like what he'll be up to. Jiro's jackets are just perfect. That is all. I have not seen much of this man, but I appreciate the jackets. Oh my God, ow. Oh, that did not look good at all. All right, into the same section of the plexiglass for a second match in a row. Oh God, he's trying to rip off the jacket. No, come on, dude, it's a great jacket. Oh wait, no, he's not. He was kind of tying him up in the jacket. Okay, that adds up. I, I feel like this dude could have came in and just like did a couple of slams and we would have been okay with it, but here we are. Maybe he's just like extended to kind of show like just how strong and powerful this dude is. And plus we haven't seen him since October of last year in the ring, so there's that. All right, Ridge Holland picks up the win. I'm still a little concerned about that apron part though. And you know, again, a nitpicky thing is the plexiglass and the steel step situation happening for a second match in a row. But again, that's a nitpicky thing that I think I just picked out. 
All right, kids, here we go. We've got Bobby Fish versus Roderick Strong. And I'm sure the diamond mine is gonna be with Roderick Strong as well. It's nice that the fans are behind Bobby. Listen to that. You know, I wish they would have done like an interview with Bobby this week and then did the match like next week. But you know what? That's again, a stupid nitpicky thing. Just me brainstorming. I think deep seated history is a bit of an understatement. Oh God. Can I just say how much I appreciate the commentary that we're getting right here? Because we're getting this really just kind of a bit of a deep dive into like both of them and like what they're capable of doing and why this is meant to be a competitive thing and not just because that they were in a stable together for a good three, four, no, three and a half years. Yeah, three and a half years. I just don't know if Diamond Mine can take any more losses since, I mean, they're such an early team. You know what I mean? Like, they're still fairly new to the game here. Wait, why did we not think that we were not going to see this match? <laughs> Great segue back into this match. At least we continued on with the continuity as to how Roderick Strong got back because he quit NXT, like, right before Stand and Deliver. So at least that all added up last week, and we appreciate continuity. Okay, well, they mentioned the Cruiserweight Championship, so is it that whoever wins this match goes to take on Kushida next? I don't know. Well played, Wayne Barrett. Well played. He was talking about like how we're into the deep waters of the match and, you know, Bobby Fish. <laughs> I'm gonna stop now. No, no, we're not. Well, can we kind of prove why they're instrumental other than just the numbers game? Roderick Strong is just coming back into this matchup right here. Oh my god! Oh god. That didn't look good neither. Y'all, Bobby just took like a huge, like just fall right there from the turnbuckle. Oh god, that's gotta be it, fam. All right, Roderick Strong picked up a huge win right here. Malcolm Bivens is stoked about it, and rightfully so. Same thing with the rest of Diamond Mine. But definitely a strong showing for Bobby Fish, and the fans were super behind him, so there's that. Not a bad match. I still feel like it could have been drawn out just a little bit more, uh, but it was all right. It wasn't like the greatest thing ever, but it was like, it was all right. It was a-okay. Butler Cameron Grimes. That sounds like some nonsense that would have been in like one of the 2K20 DLCs. Seriously, what we have like zombie Cesaro, zombie Sasha Banks, like that kind of nonsense? Yeah. They're really gonna try to make Cameron Grimes wrestle in a butler outfit. All right, my dudes are back. Grizzled Young Vets, we, we appreciate them. They are probably one of the more underappreciated tag teams on this entire roster on WWE altogether, I think. I mean, this whole matchup got started over the whole golfing situation from last week. How is he, if there's one dude that's gonna make this thing work, it's definitely gonna be Cameron Grimes. I mean, he's already got gloves. Oh my God, Cameron Grimes is going to the top rope. Oh my God, he just did a cross body, a diving cross body in the butler outfit. I'm just amazed at this because I hate dress clothes. I hated them before Panini times and I certainly am gonna hate them even more so afterwards. Oh man, poor Cameron Grimes. He's going in for the tag, but LA Knight was kind of a jerk face and just was like, oh no, you've got to figure this out. How did Cameron Grimes just do that? He just did like a two on one Hurricane Rana situation in dress clothes. <laughs> that takes real skill. Oh no, this is not good. Oh, that's it. All right, Grizzly Young Vets got to win. Although it was at poor Cameron Grimes' expense. Oh, we've got Ted DiBiase coming on out here. This whole Cameron Grimes and LA Knight feud has been one of my favorite parts about wrestling, and I'm so glad that we're getting this little, ooh, this is a cool video package so far. Ooh, this is, this is interesting. I like that interesting verbiage right there. She let her get the victories. I mean, Dakota ain't wrong on this. But yeah, no, even like during that little championship celebration, I feel bad for Dakota. I never saw Dakota as Raquel's sidekick. I mean, she quite literally gave Raquel a sidekick, but I would love to see Dakota as the NXT Women's Champ. She would absolutely crush it because she's been crushing it, like especially, you know, in the past like year, year and a half or so, I would say. But this matchup should be quite interesting and I'm excited for it. Okay, but I like this Joe Gacy's music. All right, so we saw this Trey Baxter dude against Kushida a few weeks back. I mean, they referred to it as early in, earlier in the summer. Oh God, whoever wins this matchup goes on to face Odyssey Jones. Ooh, hang on here. He's got some kind of a sleeper hole on Gacy there. All right, so we got some momentum going for Baxter, but Jesus, take the wheel. Oh my God, what just happened? I was gonna say that has to be it, right? I'm in pain just watching that. 
You're trying to tell me that this dude's not flattened from that move right there? I don't believe it, fam. What? Okay, but that ending didn't make sense to me. So we've got Carmelo Hayes versus Duke Hudson, and then we've got Odyssey Jones versus Trey Baxter. So we've got the semifinals about to go underway at some point, probably within the next two weeks, maybe? I don't know. Okay, well, one of them's happening next week. Really? They're at a sushi restaurant? I mean, okay, we'll, we'll roll with it. Okay, but I kind of like these segments that we've got going on with Zoe and Eo now. Because we've been kind of saying, like, oh, I wish Zoe Stark had a little bit more of a character. And I think we might be getting this through this tag team. I, I cannot eat raw fish. I'm picky about my seafood in general because I grew up, like, literally right on Lake Erie. So I think that's logic enough, right? Right. They're, they're bonding. They're, they're giving it a shot. Oh, she got stuck with the bill. Zoe got stuck with the bill. All right, on one hand, I really like that segment because, again, it kind of showed a little bit more character to Zoe. But the whole situation was just awkward. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see where this we'll see where this team bonding goes. I mean, Cross literally just lost to Keith Lee last night on Raw. Oh my God, oh my God. They've got like how many security guards? One, two, three, four, five security guards trying to hold off Joe. Joe ain't having any of it. The, these security guards got nothing on Joe. Why do you think Regal hired him as the enforcer? Look, I just want two hours of NXT where just Joe runs through everybody at this point. That would be swell. I will say this, I'm not as stoked as I was for this match initially because of Cross making his cameos on Monday Night Raw. And now I'm like, all right, Joe, please just run through him at this point. <laughs> oh, I'm so ready for this rematch. It's a fantastic match. We need to react to it because I haven't seen it since then. These two just beat the crap out of each other. I don't want to know how much they're going to beat the crap out of each other this time. I love these prime targets, so I'm so excited that they're doing it for this. Oh, I'm just so happy that they get some kind of a crowd for this match. I'm excited. This this is the match that I'm most excited about by far. I, I, I'm excited for the show itself, but I'm also excited for SummerSlam. But of the entire weekend, that's the match I'm most excited to see. All right, so we had all this cool stuff just get announced, and this is the match that I really don't care about. Truly, I do not care about this. Please end this whole mess right here. I don't care who wins. I mean, come on, the dude freaking kidnapped Austin Theory back in February. We were here for that. I could definitely use that comfort food from Applebee's right now. Y'all, so fun fact, uh, I ran out of coffee creamer today and I went after work to go to Kroger and I swear to God, as soon as I was going into the store, there was an exact like twin replica of Dexter Loomis and I was like, and we have a Dexter Loomis lookalike in the middle of Kroger. Let's just end this nonsense. It's been six months. Oh God, the family poor. Oh my God, they might have to make a new shirt if Dexter wins this match. All right, well, Indy's out here. I would assume that she would want to know what happens and just see everything pan out. I feel like I'm like the only person that doesn't ship Index. What is happening? Why is Gargano like circling around the ring? Okay, Candace is out here as well. Oh, Indy and Dexter, they just were holding hands right there because they were holding hands apparently underneath the ring. Well, then why didn't he wear the magical headband against Karrion Cross when he had that title match a few weeks ago? Oh, wait, what's going on? Oh, we're having buffering issues. Even my television doesn't want to watch this match. They're like, no, Christina, no, we're, we're over this. We're done. That was a bit of a strike right there. Oh, that was a super kick. Okay, that... That whole bit just happened with another super kick, but this time from Dexter Loomis. I don't know, this whole situation also bothers me because it's like, Indy's a grown adult. Like, shouldn't she be able to just be with whoever she wants to? All right, we're back to Candace and Indy arguing again. Loomis accidentally elbowed Indy off the apron. I mean, this is the most emotion that we've seen out of Dexter Loomis. Yeah, but how is this going to get enforced? I just now realized the typo on the bottom of the screen we've had this entire time. I just don't care. See, what, what, what was the point of this match if she was just gonna go right for him anyway? I mean, at least we got some type of a conclusion to this whole mess. <sighs> All right, well, that main event was certainly something, my friends. Uh, I didn't care for it. It's obviously not my cup of tea. I'm sure it's someone else's cup of tea. I'm not mad if somebody likes it, okay? Like, we're not like that, okay? Okay. But at least we've got some resolution. All right, so final thoughts for this week's NXT. Uh, this one was a bit of a rough one to get through. I'll be totally honest on that. 
a lot of the matches felt like they were kind of too long, kind of on the slower side. But we did have a lot of developments. Uh, we got the Prime Target video, which was good. The Fish and Strong match could have been a little bit better. I think it just felt a little too slow for me personally. But I thought it was all right. Um, but yeah, other than that, we had some developments on hand heading into TakeOver. And I think that's, you know, if everybody's mo if, if everything's moving forward, then I'm cool with that. But yeah, we've got some exciting stuff to look forward to next week. We've got... Cole and O'Reilly sort of facing off. I guess they were saying that Adam Cole on the commentary part of the show, they were sort of saying how he had some sort of neck issue. And I'm like, couldn't you have ridden him off for a little bit of time? Like maybe more than a couple weeks if it was like a neck injury because yikes. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think like we've seen wrestling careers ended by neck injuries, but all right, we'll go with it. There's also been like that whole speculation and everything like that, that I guess his contract expired. And so he's rolling through uh, TakeOver 36. I don't know how true that is at this point. I'm very skeptical about wrestling journalism at this point. I feel like I always have to be honest. I, I feel like I can at least comment on that aspect because I don't know, I'm a wrestling fan that happened to go to journalism school. So there's that. And you know, I taught for a year, so. There's that. But besides that, we're also going to be getting Ilya Dragunov on NXT next week. And we're also going to be getting Ember Moon versus Saray. So that's going to be quite a fun match to watch. I'm excited for that. Again, let me know what you all thought about this week's NXT down in the comments down below. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button right beside the said subscribe button. So that way you get notifications when we upload around here. So on that note, thank you all so much for tuning in and I will see you all around later. Bye everyone. <laughs>